Yes, February 1817, I. And the silver dish of water the speck of light flickered, and disappeared, what? Cried Strange, what has happened and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2, quickly, M R. Nor L and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2, nor L tapped the water's surface, retrew the lines of light, and whispered a few words, but the water in the dish, remained dark and still, he is gone, he said. Strange closed his eyes. It is very odd, continued Norell, in a tone of wonder. What do you suppose he was doing in Yorkshire? Oh! cried Strange. I dare say he came here on purpose to and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Make me mad. With a cry of mingled rage and self-pity he and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Demanded, why will he not attend to me and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. After everything I have done. Why does he not care enough to look at me? 2. Speak to me and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. He is an old magician and an old king, answered Norel, briefly. Two things that are not easily impressed. All magicians long to astonish their masters and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. I have certainly astonished you. I wanted to do the same to him and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. But your real purpose is to free Mrs. Strange from the and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Enchantment, Norel reminded him and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Yes, yes and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. That is right, said Strange irritably and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Of course it and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Is. Only. He did not finish his thought and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. There was a silence and then Norel, who had been looking, thoughtful, said, You mentioned magicians always wishing to and R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Impress their masters. I am reminded of something which happened in 1156. And R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. Strange side. And R equals 1 and S equals minus 2. In that year John Ostglass suffered some strange malady as he did from time to time. When he recovered, a celebration was held at his house in Newcastle. Kings and queens brought presents of immense value and splendor. Gold, rubies, ivory, rare spices. Magicians brought magical things. Clouds of revelation, singing trees, keys to mystical doors and so on each one trying to outdo the other. The king thanked them all in the same grave manner. Last of all came the magician, Thomas Godbless. His hands were empty. He had no